The third method is what I call the chocobo method. It is the fastest of them all. Choose an elbow in a fortress and use the gate card for the teleport. The downside is, you don't really get any license points at all. And you do need 800 gil, but uh, you pretty much inevitably have that much. These games are kicking in pretty much the same way as before. Speak to this one. And rent a chocobo. Head off to the north and just simply approach the guards. And they jabber a lot. <laughs> what do you know? An Imperial is chicken of a chocobo. How funny. Continue to the most foreign high waste. Time spent while the game is loading and during that speech does not count against the three minute limit that you have. And I would strongly suggest getting a clear blue sky, as usual. Since I got one, I'm good to go. You will not fight any enemies when you're on a chocobo, since you've got a long way to go. Break that speedometer up. dismount, because that's where the uh, village is, or the village-like area is. That's where you need to go. A whole lot faster, wasn't that? And then some a whole lot faster. Again, as usual, save your game. Regardless of the method you use to get into Moss Foreign Highways, there's a shop here waiting for the game to load that has some key items that you definitely want to get. However, I'm going to be getting rid of some of this unwanted loot. That's pretty valuable. That's very valuable. Very valuable. And the most expensive of all the loot items. You get these if you have the correct monograph and you defeat Entites, those big ball elements. Fairly valuable. This is needed for the canopic jar, but you don't need to have all three items together. Very valuable. Same here. Yeah, I can definitely get rid of some unwanted potions. I'll probably get rid of a few more. And I don't need antidotes. I need Phoenix Downs. Don't need high potions. Well, uh, let's see. I think that should be good enough. Probably junk. And this is how Balthier and Fran are now finally going to be able to catch up. Doubles license points earned. Ain't that nice. Make sure you get at least two of them. You may get more, however. This I don't need, because I already have the license, but I get one of everything anyway. This is of great use, or moderate use anyhow. This you're definitely going to need, however. I would suggest getting at least one. You might get two, though. Though anything more than two doesn't have much use. This is junk. 
junk here as well. And this, I pretty much find almost pure junk. Because I find reflect more of a negative status effect than anything else. These I generally don't use. I'm going to get a huge quantity of these. Because you know how effective they are, right? Yep, that should be it. And of course, before you go any farther, you need to license them and equip them. Accessories up to 12 is what you need to go to. In case you're wondering, for Balthier and Fran, you need this license. Of course, it does mean you have to get a lot of junk along the way just to get to it. Once you're done licensing up everyone, don't forget to equip everyone, too. Uh, let's see, I'll put it on you. Golden Amulet. Now, you're probably thinking, both you and Fran are not active, so that means this ain't gonna take effect, right? That's actually not the case. Surprisingly, this takes effect even if the character is not even active. And who should I make my thief? Hmm. Yeah, I would think that should be good enough. Now, head off to the west. Because this is the only possible way in which you can get to farther to the north, which is where you need to go. You might also be familiar with this route too. If you've seen my case where I got near perfect HP and MP, for which I'm actually kind of considering redoing so I can start at a much lower level, I'm pretty much going to, uh, well this route should be extremely familiar. This is that snake I used to level up on, that trap's in a really bad spot. Oh good, it doesn't set off. Left or right, it makes no difference. And these vultures are really good because they have some really high value items. When I mean high value, I mean high value. They drop a lot of giant feathers, and those are 686 gil apiece. And, that's not the best of it. They also drop something called a black cow, a piece of mystic armor helm. Now that is valuable. You don't need suicidal birds, you know. I'm going to give this thing a boot. Which, there is your black cow. Four license points. Both there and Fran just got eight. Of course, the black cow really isn't anything you're after, however. It is a 3% drop, which means you can potentially get four of them from a single one of those. Great Serpent's Fang, that's worth a ton of gill. A thousand, if I remember. It's over a thousand. Um, actually, I think it's not quite a thousand, but close. All these Humbabas and stuff. Two license points. Four for both you and Fran. This place here is excellent for getting license points and leveling up. Although Dustia is actually still faster for license points. However, that snake rarely appears.
continue off to this path that leads downward in an odd S-shaped pattern. Backwards S at that. It's kind of still an S in a way. There's only one possible area where you can go in this one, and it's kind of obvious. There's a bridge here. Cross it, and you'll be going into another region. Another region? Well, this is not the key area you're after, but now you're one area short. Just one area short. Get ready for start X. I like this music. It's quite catchy. Nines. Hey, I'm supposed to get nines out of it. Those uh, pumpkin heads sure love putting status effects on you, too. There is a save crystal in this particular zone, but you don't need to use it. More pumpkin heads. Just let your berserker do his job. That's a sprinter. Nothing to worry about there. He does have some pretty decent loot drops, though. In this area, you may find an enemy called Speedy, but it is uh, not very common, apparently. Nines. It's weak against fire. It's just in these dead end areas that you'll find the Speedies. Nope. Speedy is just a rare game, in case you're wondering. If you see it, hand it a remedy with that one item equipped, of course. Yeah. Pretty evasive, apparently. The south route is also a dead end, another possibility where speed can appear, and there are three of those little bunny rabbits here. Nine. powerful as well, but they're not too much of a problem. Because after all, if you can handle the overkings, you can handle those, because those are actually weaker. In this zone you'll find an orange save crystal. This time use it, because you got a boss fight coming up. After you're done saving, you got a boss fight in here. So, I'm going to unequip you, and you are going to get that one item so I can cripple the boss. First thing, pretty much, adding every single status effect in the book. And that should be it. Because this boss absorbs fire, you definitely want to go unarmed. Start X. Remedy. This thing's gonna be in trouble now. Yep, that trick still works the same way. Start 
our next. Pretty quick, wasn't it? Considering that thing has a lot of HP. Left to right. Head to the right. You need to be going north. You'll now find some new enemies present. Speaking of which, that's one of them. Sure getting pretty powerful, aren't they? Cedar Island still works wonders, doesn't it? Oh boy, left to right. Head to the right, again. Time to take the left route. Just focus on going to the north. Hmm, question marks. Yep, this is another new region, and this is where you need to be. So yes, you're now finally in the Nabrius Deadlands. Start X. However, things are going to get a little more challenging now. We'll find nothing but fangs in here with all these chests. And these... sure are a lot more powerful, huh? One thing I like doing on these... silencing them. And there's other... there's actually another one present. When provoked, it'll come in out of nowhere. That's because they have the vanish status effect. As you can tell, they're really powerful. And at this point, you might actually consider going unarmed for your main damage dealer, because these things have a very high defense. And by increasing your attack power considerably, you're going to be doing significantly more damage. And speaking of which... Let's see, you're my thief. I'm gonna pop on the fire arrows on you instead. You don't need to be stealing anything at this moment, however. You ready for start X? Another one? This is just backstory on this particular place. And boss warns. Hmm. If you value your life, we best turn back. Hmm, well, you're definitely well prepared for this. I've done this with just two characters. Yeah, they're really up there, aren't they? But, because these are undead enemies... Of course, faith just had to expire. As you can tell, they're very strong, even a thousand damage. And that's, by the way, what the best army you currently can get. Well, kind of. But you need to be going off to the east. Capricorn gem? That's nice. Of course, I don't really need it at this point. For this zone, you just go, continue straight for the most part. Just defeat it by healing on it. But you can already kind of start seeing a big difference in damage. This is not an undead enemy, but wow, 20,000 HP? Ain't that nice. So slow moving. This one okay, I have to be very careful with. This is the zone exit I need to the north. The 
the weather is very foggy, you'll encounter something called Leomond Antite. Pretty much treat it like any other Antite. Reflect God. What's the point of that? Just continue north. That enemy does actually have something you're after, but you don't need it right this second, however. Here is where you need to be. Hey, what do you know? There's a in the save crystal. However, that save crystal is not what you think it is. Oh, great. Now what? Approach it closely. Wait for him to group up. Activate it and get back. Now, it's going to be easy to fire out of this stuff. Just let your berserker do the stuff. Noticing the huge difference in damage? And the real crystal now shows up. Save your game. 